there are an amazing array of, of insects, of mammals, of birds, of plants to, to learn about. And uh, since there are many different kinds of wetlands throughout uh, Pennsylvania and across the country and throughout the world, uh, there are uh, many different assemblages, communities of these organisms to, uh, to learn about. Wetlands are usually defined by three characteristics. Uh, they have to have a certain amount of water. That water then changes the character of the soil, and then that soil supports a certain kind of plant community. And those three things together, water, soil, and plants, define a wetland. One of the important aspects of wetlands is to provide habitat for a, a great diversity, a rich diversity of, of fauna and flora. Uh, there are many different animal species that require water that must live in wetlands. There are also a, a, an amazing array of, of plant species that like to keep their roots wet and, and uh, are, are a very uh, key component of, of wetland habitats. This area of the wetland is relatively flat. Uh, it's part of the floodplain. We have a lot of reed canary grass, an aggressive species, some cattail, some jewelweed, a few other smaller uh, wetland plants or forbs that are coming up. But generally, it's a very flat, even surface uh, influenced by that flooding. Because they are closely associated with the streams that are found in any watershed, uh, they often store floodwaters as they um, go over the banks and flood the surrounding floodplain and they release those floodwaters slowly back into the uh, stream and, and therefore cause less damage downstream. So without wetlands, if we uh, pave over the floodplain or we um, drain those depressions in the floodplain that are wetlands, uh, those floodwaters have to rush down the stream and, and cause flooding uh, many times in our cities. To really understand how a stream is intimately con connected with wetlands, and here we see the stream flowing carving that bank away on the far side and depositing gravel here in the very shallow part of this uh, near side curve. Over here we can see quite a bit of debris piling up, uh, although we hate to use it as an indicator. Things like plastic bottles, styrofoam, styrofoam peanuts all indicate uh, the kind of water movement that we're getting but also suggests that we've got a, a lot of litter that's ending up in this marsh. And it's pretty clear cut that if we're going to protect stream health, we need to protect wetland health and vice versa. We're entering a part of the marsh that's very special. This is a fen. And it has to do with um, very alkaline, basic water, groundwater coming out from a limestone escarpment right here and uh, feeding into this part of the wetland creates a very different community. We can see a few cattails sprouting up, but really we've got a whole array of interesting grasses and sedges. And this is one of the, the things I really like about wetlands, when you get a very different texture of these mixed plants all together. Another important aspect of wetlands is that they, they're able to store and transform a lot of pollutants. Uh, sediments that come in can be stored and and uh, the plants can grow on them. Uh, they're able to transform some uh, nitrogen and phosphorus. Uh, they come in in excess and, and the plants can use those uh, materials to, uh, to grow. However, if you overload a wetland, you can uh, degrade it and, and it will start to uh, become less productive and uh, the plants and the animals will change and in fact it might disappear.